Today we will look at the uh, doctrine of the regeneration of the unbeliever, the rebirth of the unbeliever, making them a believer in Jesus Christ underneath the doctrine of salvation. The word regeneration appears only twice in the New Testament. Once it is used in Matthew chapter 19 verse 28 of the renewing of the world, the cosmos, at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The other usage is found in Titus 3, 5, and it speaks of the rebirth of the person who is redeemed of God. Regeneration needs to be distinguished from the idea of our salvation or our conversion. Regeneration is part of the salvation process, and it is part of the conversion process, but conversion usually refers to the changing of a person's mind and attitude of uh, looking towards Jesus Christ as their Savior, and as they put faith in Jesus Christ, then at that moment, the regeneration takes place, which is the impartation of life. It is spiritual life, it is eternal life, and it is the act whereby God gives life to those who believe in him. Now, although there's only one scripture that specifically mentions the word regeneration, Titus 3, 5, it says, God saved us not because of righteous things which we had done, but because of his mercy he saved us through the washing of rebirth and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, John chapter 3 might also give us insight into this idea of regeneration and new birth. In John 3, 3, Jesus in reply to a question by Nicodemus, he said, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of the Spirit. And so we must be born again. And regeneration brings about that rebirth. The understanding of regeneration is that it is an instantaneous act. It is not a process. It is an instantaneous act whereby the Holy Spirit enters into the life of the individual to reside there. They having placed faith in Christ at that moment, he creates the new life, the new creature. James chapter 1 verse 18 says, God chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all that he has created. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. So we see that it is the uh, faith in the truth, the gospel, that brings about our regeneration. Now, regeneration is not necessarily um, the byproduct or the result of some kind of a human experience. Although it is experienced, it is not followed by some kind of uh, phenomenon, uh, whether it be the uh, uh, clear conscience, whether it be the speaking in tongues, whether it be the filling of the Holy Spirit, whether it be a singing or psalms uh, of melody in one's heart, those things are all uh, different aspects that can follow the work of salvation as we see in Scripture. Uh, maybe some of those are real today, some of those aren't real. The main point is that regeneration is not something that you experience with a phenomenon that particularly follows. When we look at the filling of the Holy Spirit, for instance, Ephesians chapter 5, 18, it says that those who are filled with the Spirit will speak to one another psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, giving thanks in their heart, so on and so forth. There are definite characteristics of the filling of the Spirit. There are definite characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, etc. But what I want to emphasize is that it is instantaneous and that it is a work of God in the heart and the life of the individual. And it is not something that we should seek uh, an experience to confirm it. 
the experience will be that we have now the assurance of forgiveness of sins, that we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The regeneration of the individual is not something that is based on human effort. It is faith in God's word that brings about the work of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name. Now, verse 13 goes on. The children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of the husband's will, but born of God. And so regeneration is a work of God that takes place instantaneously apart from some kind of recognizable human experience, although the person does experience it. The result of rebirth is a new nature. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4 says, Through these, that is the great promises, God's word, his work, through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 says, Put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has gone, and all things are becoming new. Regeneration results in a new spiritual nature. Before, we were slaves of sin. Now we are slaves of righteousness. That new nature results in a new life and a victorious life. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 says, Hope does not disappoint us, but God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us. 1 John 4, 9 says, This is how God showed his love to us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. Romans chapter 6, verse 13 says, Do not go on offering the members of your body to sin as instruments of righteousness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the members of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. Regeneration brings a new nature. It brings a new life. It brings new power. And that power is something that allows us to overcome sin. The person who was an unbeliever and was enslaved to sin, all they could do was sin. Their best efforts were still in the eyes of God's sin. And I'm sure that they struggled with thoughts and habits and words and situations and life's problems and at times felt very, very frustrated at overcoming them. But when a person becomes a believer in Jesus Christ, they now have the power of God bringing about salvation, the power of God bringing out victory. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so now we can overcome. We are conquerors. But that only happens when the believer in Jesus Christ takes the new nature that God has given him, the new life that God has given him, and they offer themselves as instruments of righteousness to God. You know, many people in the Christian life are not finding victory because they do not believe that they are saints. They still view themselves as sinners. They do not have victory because they don't see themselves as conquerors, as overcomers. And they do not understand the great resources of new life and power that God has placed within the life of the Christian. If they would get into his word and let his word get into them a little bit more, they would get the knowledge and the understanding of who they truly are now. We are no longer slaves to sin, but we are enslaved to righteousness. We are no longer sinners, but we are saints. We are no longer struggling with the overpowering influence of sin, but now we can overcome sin by faith and obedience to Jesus Christ. And so regeneration brings with it the power of the new life. Now, it's a great privilege 
to be a believer in Jesus Christ during this new covenant period, because as we look at the Old Testament time, we really do not see the same kind of regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. Certainly there was spiritual life in the Old Testament. Certainly there was faith. And we see in Hebrews chapter 11, the great Heaven's Hall of Fame, uh, the heavenly Oscars, or uh, we would we would maybe make the analogy of the great people of faith who for eternity will speak of God's power in their hearts and lives. And we see that work inwardly in their lives, but not in the same sense of what we see in the New Testament. In the New Testament period, we see that the Holy Spirit seals each and every individual. We see that every believer in Jesus Christ is sealed for eternity. We see that the regenerating work brings about and guarantees that we will overcome sin and that we will grow and that we will prosper in our spiritual lives for God's honor and glory. Yes, the Jewish believer of the Old Testament did not have apparently all the great resources that we have by the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit with the regenerating work and the new nature, the new creation that we receive. And so we need to thank God for the opportunity to share in his divine life. The other thing is that the standards, in many ways, are even higher for us today. We have to forgive others as we have been forgiven in Jesus Christ. We must be careful what we say and what we think. In the Old Testament, it was if you committed adultery with a woman, then you were condemned. Jesus says, whosoever looks upon a woman and has those thoughts has committed adultery in their heart. And so we see that not only are we to love our neighbor as they were commanded in the Old Testament, but we are to love our neighbor as Christ has loved us. The new commandment is to love as Christ loved. And so we can do that today. We can do that because of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. There is no condemnation, therefore, to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? The law of the Spirit of life in Christ has set us free from the law of sin and of death. And when we walk by the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So it's a great time to be alive in God's plan. It's a great time to be a follower of God through Jesus Christ. And he has given to us all the resources that we need to overcome our sin. And so through prayer and through meditation and through the study of God's word, let us bring together the knowledge that we need, the knowledge that we need to obey that we might fulfill the will of God in our lives. Paul commands us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. The regenerating work of the Holy Spirit allows us to clothe, our, clothe ourselves with the life of Jesus Christ. As Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's go out and live the life of Christ by letting Christ live his life through us.